Thank you, Finance Minister of Ukraine, Natalie Jeresko, for joining us here in Bad Ragaz for this, the sixth annual A.T. Kearney Bad Ragaz Group retreat, at which we're discussing reigniting growth in Europe. Uh, would you please tell us a bit, Minister Jeresko, about this, your first year uh, since you've become the Finance Minister of Ukraine? Well, thank you very much for having me. It's a great opportunity and um, an incredible group of people. The uh, past year has been the most challenging, I think, year that I can have ever imagined, or maybe even I couldn't have imagined. Uh, we were in a very difficult position when I was invited to the Ministry of Finance by the President in December of last year. We found ourselves having to do everything practically as quickly as possible to save ourselves from a very difficult financial situation. That involved uh, bringing the fiscal situation together, reducing the budget deficit. It involved negotiating a new agreement with the IMF and with our other international partners in order to satisfy our balance of payments gap, which was at estimated to be about $40 billion over the next four years. It involved a restructuring of the debt, which was part of this balance of payments gap, uh, with our uh, euro bond holders, which we just completed recently. And it involves uh, going forward even more work in terms of ensuring transparency, in terms of fighting corruption, in terms of, in my area, tax reform, another budget coming up shortly. And um, the work is non-ending. Minister Jeresko, you have spent many years working with the private sector in Ukraine. Tell us a little bit about this uh, recent period of history which has uh, witnessed such dislocation of business and people in Ukraine. Uh, obviously, many people uh, perished uh, with the incursion in the East. There has been an internal movement of people from the East to elsewhere in Ukraine. Uh, there have been uh, clearly economic ramifications from all of this. What, in your experience, has been the reaction of Ukrainian business, and how have they managed to survive throughout all of this dislocation in your country? Well, it has been an extraordinarily difficult year. 7% of the territory has been occupied or illegally annexed. 20% of the economy has been destroyed by these wars. We have 1.2 million internally displaced people which have come to the unoccupied territories to find homes, to find jobs, to put their children in schools. And all of this is an enormous drain on the budget, an enormous cost of human life. But at the same time, uh, despite that, I think we've gotten through the worst of it. So the industrial decline has slowed tremendously. And I think Ukrainians have started to find new markets for their products, have started to test products in uh, the Middle East, in North Africa, in Asia, as well as in Europe. Ukrainian businesses have started to get ready for the January 1st full implementation of the deep and comprehensive free trade agreement with the European Union. That means that we'll have full access to the markets, but that means that you have to learn what the regulatory rules are. That means you have to learn what the differences in the individual country markets are. There's an enormous learning process that goes with it. So the trade statistics don't show it, but the process has started. I think there's another element that uh, is often uh, un unseen in Ukraine, and that is the level of entrepreneurialism that enables an economy in this much of a danger and in this difficult circumstance to continue. And um, if Ukrainians weren't entrepreneurs, uh, it would have been over. Uh, but they are very entrepreneurial, and they do look for markets, and they do look for ways to get through this very difficult time. So the combination of uh, the necessity of change, uh, the desire to change, the capacity to change has made it possible. Minister Jeresko, uh share a little bit of your uh, opinion about the reaction of Ukrainians to what must be a disappointment in terms of Western, U.S. and European reaction to first Crimea and then the Eastern incursion. And uh, what would you say about how Ukrainians may or may not have lost interest in the association agreement with Europe as a result of all that's transpired? I mean. I think that there is a level of desire to see more from the European Union, from the United States, from our transatlantic partners, from, from the free world, um, in recognition of the fact that Ukrainians have given their lives for these values of freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of media, freedom of assembly. And they've done this because there's no other alternative. There's no going back. 
And um, Ukrainians already enjoy those freedoms. They're not willing to part with them. But that said, uh, we also are very grateful at the same time for the support of the transatlantic partnership in this very difficult time. We wouldn't have been where we are today without the support of the IMF, the United States, the European Union, Japan, Canada, and even more than that. Uh, it's a matter now of taking it to the next level. It's a matter now of not just the well-found uh, stability that we've achieved uh, with the support of the international community, but taking it beyond that, which is really all about investment. It's about private sector investment, and it's about official investment, whether it's KFW in Germany or the EBRD out of London. It's about investing into infrastructure, investing into the economy, and getting us back to real economic growth and real jobs. Natalie, you have um, a lifetime of experience helping business in Ukraine understand how they can be more competitive, as well as introducing Ukrainian business to potential investors from outside of Ukraine. Uh, you've taken on in the last year the job as finance minister. What, if anything, has surprised you as you've taken on these new public sector responsibilities of such uh, importance to the people of Ukraine? Well, thank you very much. There were many surprises. I guess um, if I had to choose one, it was the depth and the complexity, the breadth of the number of problems that we had faced. For 23 years, you had either uh, fits and starts of reform or you had movement backwards by the last regime. And instead of utilizing those 23 years to our advantage, in fact, we probably, uh, the country probably, the, the leadership previous to me, to ours, uh, dug a deeper hole for the country. And so um, there, there's just an enormous amount of work to do. So the challenge is within a relatively difficult uh, bureaucracy, a relatively poor paid democracy, uh, to find the talent, the support, uh, the intellect and the desire um, to tackle so many problems simultaneously. Uh, any single day, my to-do list has got 50 to 75 things on it. Um, and it just is never ending. There's just a never ending list of urgent and important issues that need to be tackled. Natalie, in your position as Minister of Finance, you obviously are an advocate for Ukrainian business. Yet we know from many of the international indices that Ukraine is not rated very highly in terms of the competitiveness of its industry. What would you say is the principal reason for Ukrainian businesses low ranking as in, in terms of competitiveness? And what does it need to do? What does Ukrainian business need to do to enhance their competitiveness? I think those statistics reflect the business environment. And the business environment is extraordinarily complex still. We're tackling it one day at a time, one regulation at a time, one set of bureaucrats at a time. Just as an example, we just decided to reduce the size of our state fiscal service, our tax and customs, by 30 percent, letting more than 17,000 people go this year. Uh, when you let that many people go in an organization, all the business processes have to change simultaneously. You can't function as you did before. You have to make much different choices in how you operate. So change in these very, very important business-related institutions is happening. Uh, and it's not happening fast enough, but it's happening. If you turn away from the business environment and you turn to the businesses, the businesses are extremely competitive. Again, if you think about operating in such a complex environment, which was, frankly speaking, over, is over-regulated and only now is becoming less regulated, these businesses are profitable. If you talk to many of the foreign investors that have stuck with it in Ukraine for 23 years, they do relatively good business in Ukraine. And they do that because it's a very well-educated workforce because the cost of the workforce is still quite low and competitive, because the resources that are available, both agricultural and the food processing industry, but not only, there are many resources in the uh, construction materials industry, in the iron ore and the metallurgy industry. The natural resource base is very, very wealthy and very rich. The location of the country and its access to uh, transit and transport is incredible, from being on the border of Europe to the Black Sea and, uh, the, and shipping. And so the combination means that there are key sectors in Ukraine that are competitive even in this environment, which means it's a great time as the environment takes a step every single day to be better, to be invested in those sectors that are competitive even in this difficult environment, agribusiness, the human capital area, whether it's IT or nanotechnology or whether it's uh, off, uh, uh, outsourcing. It's, uh, it's about food processing. It's about value-added products in the areas where Ukraine is rich and where Ukraine has the very, very well-honed capacity uh, to serve. 
So I think uh, the combination of those complexities proves that Ukrainian businesses have been able to get through that and continue uh, to be successful. Finance Minister Natalie Juresko, thank you so much for so generously sharing your time with us and your insights. Thank you.